brow mapping gets overcomplicated because we're always trying to follow all of these rules. So in this video, I'm going to simplify brow mapping by showing you where you're allowed to break some of those rules in order to have a badass pre-draw. If you're new to my channel and don't know who I am, my name is Christy and I'm the owner of Boss Brows. I've been in the beauty industry for almost nine years now, specializing in microblading. So if you're a microblading artist looking to step up your game, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I come out with new videos every Tuesday. When your client arrives, you want to take a before picture of their brows fresh. If they come in with brow makeup, that's preferred. You can actually see how they wear their brows and what they're comfortable with. So I do recommend that you come in with your brows already done and you can take a picture of how they do their brow makeup. Then you want to clean their brows. So I just grab an alcohol wipe. First pro tip, make sure you have a brow mapping pencil, maybe even two, and that it's sharp. A dull pencil is gonna leave a really thick line on there and thick lines are gonna create a messy border. All right, so when my client comes in, I'm looking at a few things. I'm looking at her natural face shape, I'm looking at which brow is higher, whether it's the right brow or the left brow. So I'm profiling her face. But the most important thing is knowing that the face is never symmetrical. I think a lot of people struggle with brow mapping because we learn all of these rules. We have the five point technique in creating the perfect eyebrow. What we don't consider is the fact that the face is a three dimensional asymmetrical surface. So it's never gonna be perfectly even. That is the number one mistake that new microblading artists make. They try so hard to get everything perfectly symmetrical that it ends up not looking symmetrical at all. So work with the natural bone structure. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to split her face in half. You can do that by pinching the nose right here and drawing a line. I'm also going to grab my brow mapping string. I usually grab about 10 to 12 inches and you can split their face in half this way. Make sure you're including the chin and the forehead. So you're not just using the nose as the center point. So I have my center point right there. Next, we wanna find our vertical lines. I like to use a caliper to find my vertical lines. So I'm gonna use the metal part. If you put the metal part on the top part of their nostril versus next to their nostril, it's going to make a straighter line. So come to the top of their nostril and make sure you're including the entire eye. So right all the way over here. So hold that bar perfectly flush against their skin, hold your pencil flush against the bar, and make your first vertical line. You wanna hold it above the nostril, hold the pencil flush against the bar. Next, you're gonna take the bar and come to the bottom of her nostril and bring the bar underneath their lashes. Include their entire eye and watch how I hold my bar against her face. I'm going to come like this. That is a big one. You don't want to drop the bar when you make your line because it will make too long of a tail. So I'm gonna come here, include her entire eye, and come flush against her head. Hold it steady, and draw your line on the inside of that bar. If you draw it on the outside, watch what happens. See how it adds about, I don't know, two millimeters? That's too long. So always draw your line on the inside of the bar when you're creating that point on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Hold it flush against her face. Draw on the inside. And there we go. Next, we need to find the arches. So for the arches, there's a few ways to do this, and I feel like this is where a lot of people struggle. So when you're drawing their arches, I like to have my client look at me. So go ahead and look at me. So you can come from the nose, and you'd wanna go to the outside of their pupil or the outside of their iris. Now really, this is going to depend on the client's face. So this is where you have to use your artistic eye and decide what looks better. So that's one way, and I'd come up and draw my line. Okay, the other way to do it is by holding the bar vertical 
and coming to the outside of their eye. Not all the way out here, but right about here. And close your eye. I like this way because I create a vertical line this way and it's easier to measure. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna draw a vertical line on the outside of the bar. If I come on the inside of the bar, it might make my body too small and you want the body to be bigger than the tail. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and close. And now you wanna measure all your points to make sure they're accurate and the same on both sides. Make sure that you're measuring at the same point on both brows. So if I'm measuring right here on the brow, you wanna measure the same position on the other brow. So if you have to adjust anything, adjust it so that it matches on both sides. So one trick that you can do if you're not sure exactly what's going to look good on your client is just fill in their brow with a normal brow pencil and start to build a shape for them. So in some cases, a client's gonna come in and they're not gonna have any hair or maybe they have very misshaped brows. So if you're trying to show your client an idea of a brow shape, or if you're trying to figure out a brow shape for them, take a normal brow pencil and just super quick fill it in as if they, you were filling it in um, to go out or something. Now she has good brows, but I could always just take my pencil and start to just quickly draw a brow for her. So I could just draw something, show my client, and ask them, hey, does this look good to you? Is this thickness okay? And if they say yes, then great. If they say no, I want it thicker, or no, I want it thinner, then you can draw it for them. So that's just one little trick, and it helps your eye to see the actual shape come to life before spending all this time doing the brow mapping 101. So we have our vertical lines. I have an idea of the shape that I wanna put on my client's face. Now I just need to make sure that everything is symmetrical, or as symmetrical as possible. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take brow mapping string and I'm gonna create my horizontal lines. Now the first horizontal line, this is going to be my point one. The point one should come right where the brow bone starts. Now see how I'm holding this line horizontal. Do not hold it horizontal to the ground. Make sure it's horizontal to their eyes. You wanna make sure you're using her actual face shape and bone structure. So I'm coming right where that brow bone starts and I'm creating this line. This first horizontal line is going to be where my point one is. Now, point two or the second horizontal line right here, there's no trick to finding this. The only thing you need to know to find this line is how thick do you want the brows? So right now, if this is the thickness I want, that's where I'm going to make my point two horizontal line. If I wanted them thinner, I would have come down here. But this is as thick as I want them because I'm following her natural hairline. I would always recommend using someone's natural hairline and not making something that's super unnatural or like super thick. You want it to match the face. Now for point three, this is going to be my arch. So give yourself a little more slack. Start on the left or right side, whichever side's easier. If you hold on right here with your pinkies at the temple, you're giving yourself some stability. You wanna just roll that down and you can see where her brow bone stops. It's right there, okay? So you can actually feel it. And now I'm just going to carry it over. and then I'm gonna create my line. All right, perfect. So now I have my arch. Now the point four or the lower arch, I feel like a lot of people struggle with this. I get so many people asking me, where do I put point four? When we learned how to do the five point eyebrow technique, um, you learned that point one and two and three and four should be equal distance. And that's because the body of the brow should be parallel. 
This is where you can break a rule. Go ahead and break that rule. If the client has really thin brows right here, you don't wanna put your 0.4 line so low just to um, follow the rule of parallel body. Follow the natural hairline. This is where I see so many people create brows that don't match the face shape or don't look natural. So here is an example of one of my students' brow mappings. You can see on the right eyebrow where it doesn't look very natural on her because she was following that five point technique. So I'm gonna show you what I would have done. I'm drawing my point one and two. And when I draw my three and four, notice how the four hugs that hairline. Now it looks a little more natural. It's coming up and lifting her face. So you just wanna follow that hairline. So if I'm coming to the bottom of her hairline, that's right there, okay? If it were thinner and it were up here, I would go right there. This is where the natural brow hair stops. So I'm gonna start there. I'm going to come over and carry it over to the other side. I think that line is very hard to draw, okay? So what I like to do is I like to go like this. I like to just make a little line right where that hair stops and then I measure the distance between 0.3 and that line I made and I come to the other side and then I can make a little line right there. So that's another way of doing it. I call that eyeballing it. You just kind of see where their hair stops growing and create a line and make sure the distance between that point three and the point four you just created is equal by carrying it over to this side. Now for the tail. The tail, you just need to find the same direction for the tail. So for here, I wanna take her natural hairline. I can definitely improve it by making sure the tail doesn't drop lower than the front of the brow. So I like my tail to come out instead of down. So I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna bring it from point three down to my last vertical line. And I make a line. How can I check to see if these are the same? There's a couple ways. I like to measure the distance between that line I just made and where her eye ends. So right there. Now do you see the angle that my caliper is facing? That's the same angle I need to use when I'm measuring the other side. I'm going to create my sloppy version of my brows by just connecting all of the dots. I'm going to connect point two to three. So come here. When you are drawing, hold the skin taut. And when you're holding the skin taut, hold in the direction that you're moving your tool. So I am going to draw this way, so I'm holding taut in this direction. Make sure you hold your pencil 90 degrees to the skin. If you work a little bit at a time, very slowly, When you draw the line, come perfectly flush to that hairline. So don't draw your line down here. I'm almost drawing on the hair. If you need to sharpen your pencil, because it starts to get dull, then sharpen your pencil, or you can always have one ready to go, so you can have two pencils. So like right here, this is way too sloppy and way too thick. So 
So I am just going to clean it up. I'm gonna take an alcohol wipe and I'm going to take a very skinny Q-tip. These are called precise Q-tips. And I'm going to clean all of this right here. So if you hold the Q-tip flush to the skin, so don't come, don't come here, come flush against the skin. And this is a great way to clean up your brow and make it nice and crisp. The most important thing is to hug the hairline. If the hair is in your way and you need to shave some of it off so that you can draw your brow mapping lines better, then go for it. So see how I'm hugging her hairline right here. My initial line I drew was underneath. It was further down and that would create too thick of a brow. So you really need to be aware of the hairline and that you're not making the brow way too thick. So I always use the expression hug the hairline. That just means get as close to that hairline as possible. And I'm just going to clean up my brows. After cleaning up the brows, if you think you need to go over your lines again just to make them a little more dense, go ahead and do that. Before I have her approve the shape, I'm going to sit her up and look at it because laying down, the brows look different. 